In 1987, John McTiernan directed one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's most iconic movies with the action thriller classic named Predator. The film spawned a franchise that went on to be kind of known for developing lesser and quality sequels, but even with all of the flack, the brand still grew its own fan base. Movies like Predator 2 and Predators had their fair share of supporters and critics, but neither of those were legitimately hated the same way 2018's The Predator was. That film garnered a ton of critical deride and wound up being a tonal departure that I think most people regard as being so significant that they think it's not even feeling like a Predator movie at all. This is mainly due to the movie having aimed for a more comedic tone thanks to decisions made to try and turn the brand into a more blockbuster-esque series. Unfortunately for them, it didn't work, but to be honest, there are a lot of reasons for that. Today I'm going to be going over what happened to the Predator, starting with the original ideas for the movie all the way up to the terrible production troubles that plagued the film. From rewrite to re-edits and a noticeable lack of decisiveness, this is why I believe Shane Black's 2018 sequel needs a proper recut along the lines of a movie that I think benefited a lot from that, Alien 3. Coming off of the release of Predators in 2010, the brand that Arnold Schwarzenegger had first starred in back in the 80s was kind of running out of steam. The movie wasn't really a giant failure by any means, but it really just failed to reinvigorate the audience in the way that I think producers had hoped. Meanwhile, Ridley Scott was gearing up to do his new Alien prequel series, which meant that both of these properties were moving as far away from the AVP films that they could. With that being said, Predator would eventually go on to greenlight a fourth film, this time written and directed from none other than Shane Black. The guy that helped punch up the original Predator script from the 80s, as well as playing Hawkins in that film. Now it goes without saying that Shane Black's original ideas for Predator 4 were vastly different from what wound up on screen. And this is the majority of what I want to go over today. You see, when everyone initially set out to make this movie, the Predator was actually supposed to focus on exotic alien hybrid monsters that the hunters were keeping secret for some time. There was also a subplot involving predators that actively worked with the humans on something rather specific, and we'll get into that a lot later when we talk about why everything changed, but just know that if you've ever heard people saying that the final version didn't really differ much from what they had in mind, well, that's more than likely not 100% true. The Predator's situation is actually far closer to what happened to David Fincher's Alien 3 back in the 90s, where studio execs got involved and chopped the movie up in a much less inspired story. Even swapping out the ox that the alien originally came out of for a small dog along the way. Yeah, if you didn't know that, well, you do now. Interestingly, The Predator probably has even more changes like that, which would have impacted the final movie in significantly more wild ways. Obviously, the first of which being the whole alien hybrid release situation. During production on the movie, the filmmakers went about designing loads of new creatures that we never got to see. These monsters were supposed to be released by the upgrade Predator during a specific action sequence in the film, and it was supposed to be the movie's big standout sequence, complete with explosive, self-destruct collars and a whole new character whose scenes had to be cut entirely from the film. This guy was going to be played by Edward Joms Olmos, and he would have helped explain everything with his introduction to some site that was apparently called Area 52. Unfortunately, a ton of leaked set photos of, quote, Good guy predators made their way online during production, and everyone I've ever talked to absolutely hated it. I myself thinking the idea of friendly predators working once again with humans was a dumb idea, only this time they were actually on top of a tank and wearing human clothes. It was freaking crazy, man. When that stuff came out, I was all over those Mr. H Reviews videos going, dude, what is this? They gotta stop this madness, like, immediately. Now, truth be told, I think after seeing the final product, I'd wish for literally anything else, and since we're going over what this movie could have been, it may be interesting for some of you to hear that these Predators would have been revealed as being on the side of the fugitive Predator that got killed by the upgrade in the movie. They'd been working with humans because their race was currently in the middle of a cold war of sorts. Shane Black describes this being the result of having lost not once, but twice to us in the past, referring to both Dutch and Harrigan's victories against the creatures in Predator 1 and 2, which resulted in not all of the race, but a select group of of the Predators getting pissed off, and this tribe not wanting to play by the rules anymore, opting for some kind of invasion of Earth. <laughs> 
look, man, Predators Invading Earth, I just don't like that idea. I did read this awesome novel called Predator Concrete Jungle, which has Arnold's brother, who the Predators, I think, mistake for being Dutch. And in my opinion, that's the greatest sequel to the first movie. You got to check that out if you haven't already. But look, Predators inv Invading Earth, I just don't like the idea. Now, that all sounds absolutely crazy to me, but it's also some of the ideas that they originally had in mind for the Predator, and apparently a lot of this stuff wound up being filmed. This whole battle sequence and build up to the final confrontation would have gotten rid of that completely weird hunt in the woods scene at the end of the theatrical movie they released, and the death of Sterling K. Brown's character's obviously altered as well. What I think is the most interesting about this original idea is something that definitely will not end up in any special edition or alternate cut down the line. And that is the original ending that had Arnold Schwarzenegger himself actually reprise his role as Dutch from the first film. Telling us that the Predator War is coming to Earth and that we'd better get ready for the next movie. Now of course Schwarzenegger turned the role down, he read the script and was like nah. And here's where things get even more crazy. The endings that they wound up shooting for the Predator apparently involved Ellen Ripley from the Alien movies and if it wasn't her they had a backup ending with Newt from Aliens appearing instead of what they finally went with which was that stupid Iron Man Predator suit that we got in the final cut. I guess the setup would have been for either Ripley or Newt to be revealed as the Predator killer and would have helped pave the way for another movie involving the aliens. Whatever the case may be, they'd have to pick one of those endings for their final ending because I guess they filmed both versions of that scene and uh, yeah man, that's just wild. Now when it comes to getting that final Final Cut. They filmed all this footage, guys. It's sitting on a hard drive somewhere with unfinished special effects. The one I've been talking about for this whole video, that original version of the movie, Shane Black, believe it or not, actually tried to convince the studio to let that happen. But just like Alien 3, they wouldn't really release it in that form just yet. Black has gone on record to state that the movie isn't exactly finished, with special visual effects still needing to be completed, and they have to edit that footage back into it with the original footage being finalized for release. So, you know, ADR stuff, cleaning it up, and just making sure it all flows properly. But make no mistake, Shane Black wanted to make it happen, with audiences seeing both the theatrical version and this original vision in a home media release that we unfortunately never got to see. And so for now, everything they shot that got cut from the Predator will remain buried away in a studio somewhere for nobody to watch. Unless somebody makes the decision to release it to the fans sometime down the line. Now, even a person like myself, and I, I, I think I've made it clear, who thinks the Predator, as it stands, is most definitely one of the worst entries in the series, is definitely on the side of the studio releasing the original version. Because when movies get chopped up and butchered for theaters, it doesn't really do anything Thing but harm the final product in the long run. And after seeing the extremely better version of Alien 3, I think these guys literally have nowhere to go but up in my opinion. I'm not saying it's going to be as good as Alien 3 The Assembly Cut. It probably can't be, but wouldn't you like to have like this version of Predator 4 and then this version of Predator 4? Now of course, The Predator has a ton of other issues that are kind of beyond saving. The way the movie treats autism is really just not right at all as far as I'm concerned, and the controversy surrounding Olivia Munn's delete scene with a real-life convicted predator are just too crazy to even comprehend, and I don't have to explain how much I dislike the goofy humor in that movie either. But still, there are plot holes that are filled in with what people have said existed in the original version, such as the reason the fugitive predator suddenly wakes up being the result of it simply playing possum the whole time, so it would have access to more weapons. In the film, it just kind of, you know, in the theatrical cut, that always confused me. He just wakes up out of nowhere and they're, oh my god, the predator's awake, he's biting my arm! And, you know, he decides to attack everybody, that's... Dumb. <laughs> So, with everything I've mentioned in this video being said, how likely is it that we will ever get to see that footage? Well, honestly, I think more so than anybody really wants to believe, and that's mainly due to Prey already getting a good response, as well as the aforementioned Alien 3 having its last laugh back in 2003. With that movie's assembly cut releasing a full 11 years after its theatrical run in 1992. Right now, The Predator has been out for four years, so who knows, maybe in 2029, we'll get the proper version of Predator 4 we were denied 
played alongside that future war with Skynet. But for now, we just have this version with less alien hybrid creatures to talk about. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the ultimate cut of The Predator, a movie I personally dislike more than any of the other films, with the notable exception of probably AVPR. But even with that dislike I have for that movie, I still want to see what Predator 4 had in store before everything was changed. What's the worst that they could release? It'll just be, in a worst case scenario, bad version of Predator 4. We've already seen that. So I throw the question to you guys. Do you want this recut to happen? Hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.